April of 2009, a Houston man veered off the road into a water-filled ravine. His car was washed several hundred feet before he and another passenger were able to escape. Unfortunately, five of his children who were in the car all died that day. In a similar accident in September of 2008, a commuter train crashed, killing 25 passengers. In both of these accidents, the driver was distracted. Do you have any ideas what the driver was distracted by? I think my speech kind of gave it away, but a cell phone. Now, I venture to say that probably everybody in here has a cell phone on, the, on them at this time. There's probably a few people that are being distracted by a cell phone right now, trying to avoid my speech. <laughs> Today, I want to talk to you about the dangers of texting and driving. I want to talk to you about what recent studies have shown regarding texting and driving, how prevalent it is, some of the consequences of texting and driving, and finally, what I suggest we do to make our roadways safer. Recent studies have actually shown that texting while driving is very dangerous. One study by Car and Driver magazine placed a light on the front of a windshield. And while drivers were headed down the straight runway, they were simply asked to stop as soon as that light appeared. In this study, they were given four different uh, situations. First, they did it while non-distracted. Second, while reading a text. Third, while writing a text. And finally, while intoxicated or drunk. The, surprise, the uh, results may surprise you. In each case, the worst result was while the driver was writing a text. And this is compared to while intoxicated. The surprising thing about these averages is that the worst case scenario or the worst result was actually dropped from these. If I go to the next slide, you'll see in terms of how many extra feet traveled by the car, how bad the worst results were. You'll see there on the, on, the, on the most extreme example, the driver traveled an extra 319 feet before stopping his car. That's an extra 302 feet more than the worst scenario while driving impaired or drunk. Now, I don't think anyone in here would get into a car drunk or get into a car with a drunk driver. I think as a society, we're pretty much against drunk driving. But are we against driving while texting? The results show that in our age group, we're pretty much okay with it still. Um, in the 18 to 27 year old age group, a study by Nationwide Insurance showed that 37% of 18 to 27 year olds admit to texting while driving. Now you may think we're doing all right. We're under 50%, less than half of us are doing it. But imagine if 50 or 60 people in this room today got up and went to their cars drunk. Would we wanna share the roads? I don't think so. This leads me to the consequences of texting while driving. In a similar study by Nationwide Insurance, 45% of people or the respondents to this survey had been admitted that they'd been hit or nearly hit by someone with a cell phone in hand. So if we haven't been hit, we probably were the ones driving, I imagine. When I was five years old, my toddler brother wandered into our neighbor's driveway and was hit by a car and killed. Now at that point, there weren't really cell phones. So I don't think that that, that was the, ca the, the cause of the accident, but I know what it takes to change a life, and it's only a moment. A similar study by the University of Utah has shown that you are six times more likely to get in an accident if you're texting while driving. Driving is dangerous enough. Why are we doing an activity that makes it six times more dangerous? Aside from the implicit consequences of injury or death, 17 states have now instituted bans on texting while driving, Utah being one of them. Each of these states has their own consequences to it, but in Utah, which has the most stringent, most extreme consequences, if you kill or injure someone while texting in an accident that is caused by texting while driving, you will be, you will be fined in the same way that you would if you were drunk driving. In a, in a recent case, uh, the, the person that was, was charged with texting while driving was given 15 years in prison. It's a very serious crime, and it has serious consequences. So what do I recommend we do? I think the first thing that we all need to do is as soon as you get into your car, turn your cell phone off or throw it in the back seat. I know that our, our initial reaction is always to answer that phone as soon as it rings or vibrates. That's, a, that's the first thing that we wanna do, whether we're driving or not. So don't even allow it to be a distraction. Second, don't allow your friends to text and drive. Be a designated texter or a designated texter in your car. If you have to have it on, let your friend do it for you. And finally, make the decision today. As soon as you get in the car, you're going to have that distraction again. But don't let that be a distraction. Decide now what you're going to do. 
In closing, I return to those two stories that I started with. In those two accidents alone, 30 lives were taken because two drivers decided to be distracted by a cell phone. As you go home today and you get in your cars, make the right choice. Turn off your cell phone.